So I believe, I believe we can start now. So hello everyone, on, be, on behalf of the Europe House Zagreb and European Movement Croatia, I would like to thank you all for participating in today's webinar. The Europe House Zagreb, together with the European Movement Croatia, uh, have, uh, has been around for 30 years a leading Croatian non-governmental organization for the promotion of European integration, but also inform informal education, culture and international relations. Sadly, we can't hold uh, the webinar on our premises, but the Europe House Zagreb is still suffering from earthquake damage. But to comply with epidemiolog epidemiological rules around us, it may be easier to keep everything online. Since the mid 1970s, the European community has been developing its relationship uh, with Israel on a bilateral level. Since then, Israel and the European Union have been linked by strong relations that have achieved a high level of progress enabling them to create a strong network. Uh, now I would like to introduce you to our lecturer today, the ambassador of the State of Israel to the Republic of Croatia, His Excellency, Mr. Ilan Moore. Since joining the Israel diplomatic service in 1983 and throughout his career, Ambassador Moore has held a wide variety of diplomatic posts with particular focus on geostrategic issues at home and abroad. Prior to his appointment as Ambassador of the State of Israel to the Republic of Croatia, Ambassador Ilan Moore served as uh, Ambassador of the State of Israel to Hungary between 2018 and 2016, and as Senior Political Advisor to Minister of Justice Ayelet Shakid in Jerusalem between 2016 and 2018. I would like to thank you for being here with us today, Mr. Ambassador. And for the end, I will also direct you to some technical things that I believe most of you are already familiar with. For the beginning, please make sure your microphones are turned off so we don't interfere with the course of the lecture. And likewise, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to use chat to write them down so we will eventually read them or discuss at the end of the webinar. Now I will leave the word to the ambassador. Mr. Moore, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Dobodoshli. Welcome. I'm very happy to be here today, even uh, on a virtual, uh, in a virtual way. I appreciate very much the initiative of the European Movement Croatia and the European House Zagreb to invite me. Uh, actually, we scheduled uh, a live lecture a couple of months ago, but because of the corona, we have to meet like this. And I think uh, this is um, the best we can under the given circumstances. Uh, as I said, I appreciate uh, the opportunity uh, to talk, uh, to share with you some of the ideas uh, regarding the relationship between Israel and the European Union. Um, uh, at the end, uh, of course, there will be time for us for questions, and I'll appreciate uh, as many questions as possible in order to make our um, meeting today not a monologue, uh, but a dialogue between us. Well, uh, the relation between Israel and the European Union, as it was said, uh, starting uh, many years ago, um, uh, and are uh, long and significant, especially to Israel, but not only. Uh, I think it is significant also for the European Union and the member states. Uh, I'm going to talk today about Israel and the European Union and not about Israel's relation with the 27 countries. Uh, which are considered to be bilateral relations. I'm talking about Israel, Israel's relation with Brussels, with the Commission, with the Council, and uh, the uh, attached bodies uh, of uh, the European Union. Israel, uh, one should say that um, uh, at least 50% of the population in Israel has one way or another connection to Europe. For example, I was born in Israel, but my parents came from Eastern Europe after the war. And I think my story is a typical story uh, for many, many Israelis, uh, almost 50% of the population. Israel now has uh, 9.2 million citizens, uh, second generation and even third generation um, living in Israel. But many of them, as I said, have a connection uh, to Europe, either their, their ancestors were born in Europe or they were under European ru rule, uh, for example, in Algeria, in Morocco, in Tunisia, and of course in uh, Egypt, Iraq, Syria, and Lebanon, uh, which uh, are Arab countries which were, were, uh, were uh, under the control of the colonial powers as they, as they, uh, as they uh, used to be considered to be at that uh, days, at those days. 
for many years, the Jews in Europe were the significant other of Christian Europe, an absolute victim of modern Europe. For this, there are two elements. This long history of more than 1,000 years of uh, presence of uh, Jewish communities and Jewish people on the European continent has a bright side. And we are talking about the emancipation, their contribution to the culture, science, economy of the societies in which they used to live. And at the end, the, which culminated uh, with the idea of having a Jewish state with the establishment of the state of Israel. This is the bright side. The dark side is the, the, the history which tells us about the Crusades, the pogroms, anti-Semitism, and of course, the Holocaust. Therefore, we believe that the European countries, the modern European countries bear an historical responsibility for what many Europeans have done to many Jews throughout the history. And this element, is a very important element when we talk about the nowadays relations between Israel and the European Union. This historic element of uh, the harm which was inflicted uh, on the Jews uh, for many centuries and uh, those uh, Jews who survived the Holocaust and immigrated to Israel, they carry with them the long history of uh, these negative aspects which, are, which is very important to understand the very interesting relations uh, that are now between us and the European Union. It means, in other words, that the European Union is uh, in a situation which it must deal with the consequences of the uh, failures of the harm inflicted on the Jewish people, its own citizens, and to uh, draw the necessary consequences, uh, which nowadays have become the characteristic of modern Euro the modern European Union. And I'm talking about uh, many uh, values and principles. I'm not going to uh, name all of them, but peace is first and foremost, regional stability, economic development, promoting stable regimes, combating terrorism. But for me, as an Israeli, one of the most important elements which uh, European has learned out of history is the fact that political conflicts will never be, be solved again through war and violence. The number one consequent, which as I see it, uh, which is the element uh, principle of the European Union of today is the negation, total negation of the use of force in order to solve political uh, conflicts and the use of dialogue as the only way to find solutions for political conflicts or any other conflicts on the continent, respecting the international law as a guiding principle in the international relations. And this is as a basis to other values, uh, as uh, which I mentioned, peace, uh, fighting uh, terrorism, uh, promoting stable um, economy and regimes, culture, uh, sport, uh, all those other values which we take uh, uh, for granted nowadays, but on, uh, on the basis of them is the idea that no more war means no more use of violence and force in the political relations in the international arena uh, between Europe, European countries themselves, and of course, in the world respecting the law and the rule of law and the international law as a guiding principle, as I said, in their relations. This is a small introduction to uh, what I am going uh, step by step to present to you regarding the relations uh, between Israel and uh, the European Union. Um, the title of this, uh, of my presentation is A Shared Past, A Complex Present and a Promising Future. I'm going to talk about these three elements um, uh, uh, right now, or I've started to talk about them right now, having presented to you the basic principles of the foundation of the European Union. There are many others, but we don't have time to elaborate. Um, I would like to emphasize a couple of things regarding Israel vis-a-vis -vis those principles and those elements which I mentioned regarding the uh, Europe after the war, after the Holocaust. One element is that the establishment of the state of Israel was modeled after the European nations. The second element, the Israeli society has been based on those 
elements which I presented to you, except for one element which is very interesting and very important to understand the complexity of our relations, which is the use of force. I will uh, talk about it in a few minutes uh, um, as long as uh, we continue with uh, my presentation. Israel, from the very beginning, from 1948, has adopted all Western European core values. Israel is the only Jewish and democratic country in the Middle East. There is no other country in the Middle East which shares the EU common values and political beliefs except the state of Israel. This is not to say or to criticize other countries in our region. This is only stated a fact. There is no other country in the Middle East which shares the EU, uh, EU common values and political beliefs except for the state of Israel. Well, uh, I see here that uh, the American ambassador is present and I welcome him like I welcome other uh, guests and friends uh, with all due respect. And this is the last principle regarding Israel's view of the European Union. With all due respect to our great friend, the United States of America, with which we share many values, many cultural conceptuals and um, uh, principles. Europe fills in, for better and for worse, a great part of Israel's political, economic, moral, and cultural world, for better and for worse. I will go very briefly about, uh, or I will present to you very briefly the milestones regarding the development of a relation between Israel as, and the European Union. And please bear in mind, again, that Israel is not a member of the European Union. Geographically, we cannot be a member of the European Union. Not to say uh, there, are, there are other reasons, but as far as geography is concerned, we are not part of Europe. We are part of Africa. We are part of Asia. Uh, uh, this is our very special situation geographically. Uh, uh, this is our very uh, peculiar situation. So the relations start in 1959, 1960. Uh, this was the first contact um, in, two, in, in 2020, this year, we marked 45 years of the, free, of the free trade agreement, which we signed with the European, at that time, European Common Market, 1977, 1975, excuse me. We have um, established a framework of cooperation, namely the association agreement, which we signed in 2005. Um, this association uh, agreement is being uh, uh, managed by a council. Uh, which is supposed to meet every year, we, which has 10 different professional subcommittees, uh, which, has, uh, which have the mandate, all those committees, uh, the subcommittees to uh, reflect on our bilateral relations on many, many issues, uh, be it uh, the economic uh, issues, um, finance, health, uh, social issues. Um, in 2004, uh, after the big enlargement of um, the European Union, we became also a part of the European neighboring, uh, neighboring program, the ENP. Um, within the ENP, we have an action plan, which uh, also supposed to upgrade and uh, promote the bilateral relation between us and the European Union. Um, we are participating within the European Union in many, many European uh, tools and programs, the twinnings, the CBC, Europol, fight against uh, drugs, and whatever topic you can think of, Israel is they're cooperating with the European Union. I would like to mention this, that this action plan, which, um, uh, as I said, uh, has to uh, steer the activities of those 10 subcommittees, hasn't been updated, hasn't been uh, uh, looked at since 2009. And this is part of the difficulties that Israel and the European Union have which are now to be seen very dramatically. Um, so this is uh, very quickly the milestones of uh, the development of the relations between the uh, European Union and Israel. Uh, I am proud to say that as far as a uh, non-member of the European Union, uh, a non-member of uh, Europe, we are the number one country which, is, which has this kind of uh, variety of activities with the European Union. And this is, um, for me, it's not, uh, not a surprise because we consider uh, Europe as our backyard. Uh, our relations, as I said at the beginning, are very long, very wide. And this is quite natural that we have such a variety and very and active uh, activities 
um, in all those fields. But, and we are approaching this, but um, there is a lot of uh, statistic regarding our relations, uh, regarding trade and aviation and research and development. Um, I don't have time uh, to elaborate, but the trend in all those issues, including higher education, including Europe 2020, including, let's hope, also um, uh, Horizon Europe, uh, which will replace uh, uh, Europe 2020. All those uh, programs, in all those programs, Israel is participating, not only as a recipient country, but also as a donor. Unlike other countries, which, the EMP, uh, which are members of the EMP, which is the neighborhood uh, program, Israel gets money, but also donate money and also uh, in, um, capacities. Um, uh, it's knowledge uh, in science and technology in all those various uh, fields which the, the European Union feels as very important to 550 million citizens of the Union. Um, well, uh, this is, um, you know, on the, on the face of it, uh, one can think that uh, uh, the relations are good, uh, the relations are moving uh, as expected. But unfortunately, this is um, only part of the picture. The wider picture is a little bit more complicated. It's more um, uh, gray than uh, white. Uh, and the reason for this um, um, situation in which uh, many Israelis have an ambivalent, a deep ambivalent feeling regarding the European Union, and the reason for it is mainly its political attitudes, the political attitude of the European Union toward Israel. And in the center of it, for many years now, stands the Palestinian-Israeli conflict as part of the MEPP, the Middle East Peace Process, which has become a central issue uh, in the political relation between us and the European Union, overshadowing, unfortunately, this win-win situation, which I've uh, briefly described to you in which Israel and the European Union enjoy fruitful relations in many issues which are benefiting both sides, which creates this win-win situation. But over and above this win-win situation stands the political uh, conflict uh, between the Palestinians and Israel. Not only this uh, conflict overshadows uh, the relations, it became, it has become a constant source of misunderstandings, frictions, and growing mutual mistrust between us. This is also an obstacle for promoting and deepening our relation for the benefit of the two sides. It has uh, become a precondition. Uh, our, the Palestinian-Israeli conflict has become a precondition for improvement of our relations. There is suspicious this, uh, and there's, uh, there is mutual dis mistrust between us and the European Union on the basis of different opinions, how to solve the European, the Palestinian-Israeli uh, conflict. Um, and we wonder how come an important issue, as much as uh, this issue is important, the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, how come this one, issue overshadows and pre uh, prevents from both sides to continue our relations, our bilateral relations, as if there is no Arab-Israeli conflict, and to deal with the United States, of course, and also if the European Union would like to participate, to deal with the Arab-Israeli conflict as, is, as if there are no bilateral relations with the European Union. This unholy connection which overshadows, as I said, the good relations with the European Union. Um, this is the big obstacle, uh, as we Israelis see uh, nowadays, and makes um, the relation between Israel and the European Union uh, complicated, um, makes uh, them, um, um, you know, in a situation in which uh, um, what we call a megaphone diplomacy is being used against Israel and creates a situation in which instead of a dialogue regarding how to solve the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, we have two monologues which are talking over each other, not each, to each other. And this is, to my opinion, the crux of the problem uh, nowadays. 
I will elaborate a little bit more. Just to illustrate uh, our feelings as Israelis toward the European Union, as much as we like Europe, as much as many, many, I think the majority of Israelis as tourists are going to Europe and not to America or to Eastern part of the world. Um, the feeling that we have toward the European Union um, is uh, demonstrated by the following uh, data, uh, which was accumulated in uh, September 2019. A research showed that 45% of, of the Israelis see the European Union as Israel's opponent. Only 27% perceive the Euro Union, the European Union, as a friend of Israel. The reason, mainly because of the harsh criticism of Israel by the European Union and its leaders, and the one-dimensional view of Israel only through the prism of the Palestinian-Israeli uh, Palestinian conflict in the framework of the Middle East peace process and the issues of the settlements. From 2012 until today, this issue, this one dimension uh, observation view of Israel by the European Union, has, uh, this has been the case, at least on the declaratory level, by creating a linkage and conditioning between expanding our connections on the issues I presented to you, the issues of economy, science, technology, research, AI, cyber, all those issues which are really important to both sides, this has become a linkage or a linkage has been created between them, between expanding those relations and expanding our cooperation in them and the political process in the Middle East. It began with the adoption of the foreign minister's conclusion in May, in December, last year, uh, which made the connection, this linkage, we call it, I call it I, an unholy uh, connection, uh, which uh, made two elements, which uh, produced two elements. A, the application of existing European legislation fully and effectively regarding products originating behind 67 borders. And two, ensuring that agreements between the EU and Israel do not apply to territories that come under Israeli control after 1967, including Golan Heights, uh, Chadea and Samaria, and East Jerusalem. Well, now we have become, we have uh, reached um, uh, a situation in which uh, for the last 15 years, the association agreement and the association council haven't been uh, updated and haven't been convened because of this linkage uh, which the European Union um, uh, did or has been doing ever since. Even in this year, uh, um, the second half of last year, we could see the conclusion of the Foreign Affairs uh, Council um, regarding the MEPP and uh, making sure that this linkage will uh, still be live and kicking. Um, so, um, this is uh, quite right, the, the situation. Um, uh, on top of it is, of course, uh, the, the, the fact that um, uh, with all this happening between us and the European Union, uh, while the same, at the same time, the European Union continues to upgrade its relation with countries such as Lebanon, Jordan, Egypt, Tunisia, and Morocco, by presenting an upgrade framework for cooperation, while Israel, a country which, with all due respect to other countries, can contribute much more to the uh, standard of living or to the upgrading of standard of living of the European citizens is ex being excluded from this uh, process and uh, being you know, uh, under the shadow of this unholy connection between upgrading the relations and um, advancements and development within the um, uh, Middle East peace process. Um, there are many reasons why uh, there is this uh, difference of opinions, why there is the linkage, um, uh, and I think the, one of the main reasons is, uh, again, the consequences which the European Union has drawn from the Second World War. Uh, after the biggest tragedy in mankind, after the Holocaust, uh, Germany and France, the big enemies 
have decided to come together and create a situation in which, as I said at the beginning, war or, or violence will not be needed anymore in order to solve political differences. Um, they have started the European Union, which is today known as the European Union. They have uh, uh, based their uh, new reality or new vision of the future in the 50s on, on, on the premises of no more war. Um, no more war is very noble. Uh, Israel, of course, ascribed to it, um, you know, wholeheartedly. Uh, a country which suffers uh, uh, from violence and terrorism and war against us throughout our last 72 years in which we were um, in existence, we are in existence. Um, in Europe, the idea, the concept of no war, no more war has become uh, something which is very sacred. Um, and, um, you know, you will bear with me if I use the word pacifism. Uh, in principle, pacifism is good as long as you are not obsessed about it. And um, regarding uh, peace, stability, rule of law, international law, um, solving pro, uh, disputes uh, through dialogue, this has become the raison d'etre of Europe. And by being a pacifist, by looking at the world through this prism, as noble as it is, it makes the European a little bit I would not say blind, but this distorts a little bit uh, them to see the reality in which Israel, um, Israel has been living in the last 72 years. When the Europeans say no more war, this is understandable. But when we say no more war, this is something which we have learned on, our, on ourselves. Six million reasons for no more, no more war. On top of it, we have been living in an area in which less and less, but still, there are countries which are determined to make sure that the only democracy in the Middle East, the only Jewish state in the world, will do not exist, will be wiped on the, uh, of the surface of the, uh, of the Middle East. And I'm talking about Iran. I'm talking about a terror organization like Hamas, Hamas and Hezbollah. I'm talking about the necessity of the Israeli people, <coughs> excuse me, on, on a daily basis to survive and to protect themselves, to defend themselves. And as much as we, as a democracy, as a young democracy, as a Western democracy, from the very beginning, this, is, was a, this has been uh, or was a strategic decision by our founding fathers to establish Israel as a Western democracy. As I said, the uh, uh, the role model for our state was the nation states in Europe. As much as we would like to maintain our democratic uh, character and to keep them maintained and to preserve the values in which all the Israeli children are being educated on, the reality in which we have to defend ourselves with violence, against violence, this is sometimes, according to my humble opinion, is not understood very well in Europe. They don't understand, they, European, European as such, many citizens of, uh, of uh, Europe and also the European Union um, leaders find it, and other countries find it difficult to understand how come this long lasting conflict between Israel and the Palestinians cannot be solved through dialogue. If they, European Union, Germany and France have done it, why can't Israel and the Palestinians do it? Well, this is a very legitimate question, but this question is out of reality because the reality in the Middle East is such that prevents us to come to, uh, uh, to the table in order to find a solution to the Palestinian, so-called Palestinian conflict. And believe me, and here is not propaganda, there are no more, um, peace-loving country than Israel, which really would like to solve the Palestinian problem. You know, let me just open brackets, small short brackets, and tell you what, to my basic opinion, humble opinion, is the tragedy of this conflict, which has been here for many years now, many centuries, or at least half a century. The tragedy is the fact that two rights, the rights of a Palestinian for self-determination, which Israel has recognized, 
and the right of the Israel to live there as a democratic Jewish state, they are fighting on each other, clashing on each other, with each other on the same piece of land. And we have to find a solution. We have to find a compromise. But when one side is reaching out, and those who understand the history of, of uh, the political negotiation with the Palestinian land, they know what I'm talking about. Many times we have offered the Palestinians very generous, not as we are, you know, uh, being uh, 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 the masters of their area, but as equals, generous offers in order to fight, start a process to solve the problem, we always been rejected and we found, always have found the word no. The principle of the Palestinians has been twofold. A, all or nothing, and they have never missed an opportunity to miss an opportunity to come to terms with Israel. Now, and I will talk about it in a few minutes, the situation has been changed dramatically with the Abraham Accords, with the relations with, of course, Egypt and Jordan, but lately with Bahrain and the United Arab Emirates, which is a breakthrough in the psychic, in the psychology, in the reality of the Middle East. So the idea of solving the Arab-Israeli conflict we don't need any other country in the world, the big, the small, or, or, or big one, to tell us that we need to solve a problem. We know that, but the reality prevents us from doing it. But in spite of this reality, which is difficult for us, difficult for, for the Palestinians, this issue has become the face of the relation between Israel and the European Union. And this is something which we totally cannot accept. If the European Union would like to be a credible partner to any peace process in the Middle East, be it with Arab countries, be it with the Palestinians, it has to be, it has to show its credibility by treating both sides on a equal foot. When, where, um, uh, as much as the European Union um, uh, appreciates Israel's um, activities in the fields which are important for them, the European Union regarding, considers the Palestinians and the, as the underdog. They are the, in quotation mark, the unmature. They are the boy in the neighborhood. They have to be taken care of. Whereas Israel is the mighty bully in the neighborhood. All responsibility is on them. And all the, what I mentioned before, the megaphone uh, diplomacy, the declaration, coming from Brussels regarding the MEPP, the Middle East Peace Process, and the relation between Israel and the Palestinians, all declaration put the onus on the state of Israel. They never recognized the right of Israel to, to exist as a Jewish, a Jewish state, whereas they always talk about the Palestinian state. So we have a lot of reasons to have uh, um, our stomach full, so to speak, uh, with grievances vis-a-vis uh, -vis the European Union, uh, which um, made this idea of peace at all, all costs um, in, in a way obsessive when it comes uh, to, to Israel, not understanding the reality uh, in which we Israelis have been living in, uh, uh, characterized by um, terrorism, wars, and ejection. By the way, Israel, is the only state in the world which its legitimate right, right to exist is being ejected on a daily basis by several countries like Iran and like other uh, Muslim countries, but first and foremost, Iran, which uh, also is uh, trying to implement the idea of uh, destroying Israel uh, by uh, having a very advanced nuclear uh, program uh, long-range missile program, uh, subversive uh, activities in the area, uh, supporting Hamas and Hezbollah, two uh, uh, terror organization. Um, so uh, this is also something which the European Union must take into consideration when he puts uh, the, uh, the light regarding the uh, peace process between us and the Palestinians and show a little bit of understanding uh, to our very special situation and just disconnect this unholy connection between our good relations, which are going on anyways, 
but they are not. They haven't uh, been upgraded, and the political process in 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 the Middle East. Well, I mentioned Iran. I mentioned Hezbollah. Uh, when we talk about about Iran, uh, uh, the JCPOA, uh, the uh, agreement between uh, the world and Iran, has been um, reached a separate uh, level uh, by the European Union. Um, uh, Hezbollah, uh, his uh, terror organization. Uh, which um, uh, many countries uh, have already included it into their own uh, list of uh, terror organization. And it's about time that all uh, the countries in, uh, the Euro in Europe will follow uh, Germany, uh, even Kosovo, um, uh, by declaring uh, Hezbollah as the terror organization and making sure that uh, Lebanon, which has been hijacked by Hezbollah, uh, will be freed uh, by this uh, terror organization. So I call on uh, those uh, in Croatia who are responsible for this issue to look into it and uh, to make sure that uh, Croatia and other countries will uh, follow those who understand the real meaning of this terror organization. Um, I'm reaching the end of my presentation. Um, I think that uh, we will have, uh, I will have to uh, uh, reach a point in which, um, the, as I said, and I would like to repeat it, uh, if the European Union wants to be a part of any peace process in the future, uh, it is part of various activities, part of the Quartet, Euro European Union is part of the Quartet, has uh, uh, presence um, in the West Bank and also in the Gaza border crossing, but if it wants really to um, uh, be an honest broker and to play a role as the United States, we will be more than happy to do so. Um, even the, 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 the fact that we signed the Abram uh, Accord with Bahrain and, uh, and uh, the United Arab Emirates has been accepted by the European Union, uh, to my uh, humble opinion, with a semi-cold shoulder. Uh, congratulating it, but of course, putting the Palestinians uh, in uh, also in uh, in the middle of its uh, declaration, um, which uh, you know um, uh, they uh, showed by this declaration. Uh, this is another example of the European Union sustaining to the veto power of the Palestinian of any development in the relations between us and uh, uh, the European Union. Um, this is not to say, by the way, yes, Israel can be criticized uh, for its policies uh, on a daily basis. Uh, we are not perfect. Uh, we make mistakes. And the European Union uh, is allowed to, of course, to criticize Israel. Uh, we, Israelis, criticize our own policy on a daily basis. See what's going on in Israel nowadays. Uh, demonstrations um, uh, on, on uh, many issues regarding uh, the, uh, the policy of, of our government. But, uh, an obsessed criticism and using a tone which makes the criticism very harsh and one-sided, this is not acceptable. Using double standard against Israel, this is not acceptable. We will not accept any European attempt to pressure Israel by using this kind of attitude toward us. Um, having said that, I think that um, after the uh, last European uh, Parliament election and the beginning of uh, the new uh, European leadership mandate, uh, the president of uh, the European Council, the president of the Commission, the high representative, Mr. Borrell, I think we can be cautiously optimistic for a new beginning in the relation between uh, the two sides. We have the impression that um, uh, the new leadership of uh, the EU recognizes our uh, valuable contribution uh, to its uh, basic um, needs and more. And therefore, they understand also the importance to the Euro uh, European Union itself. Israel is committed to continue the good relations and to continue to cooperate with the European Union to promote our ties and to, as I said, to cooperate. Um, for example, uh, Netanyahu, my prime minister, was invited um, in the, in the uh, summer, last summer, 
to participate in a virtual conference to regarding fighting the COVID-19, um, which is again an example of, uh, of the European Union recognizing the values of Israel in science and technology. Uh, green, the Green Deal, the climate change issues of environment, immigration, defense and security, HLS, cyber, AI, empowerment of women, uh, smart cities. I can give you a list of all those topics which are important to Europe, which are important also to us, which are the potential for our cooperation had we not had this uh, hand only li uh, linkage uh, between um, the peace process and the promoting of uh, our relations. Uh, of course, Horizon Europe, um, uh, Israel will participate and will contribute as much as it can uh, to um, all, the all the parts of the programs, including uh, individual funding. So all of the, all, all what I mentioned are important to Israel, important to um, Israel's agenda vis-a-vis uh, -vis the, uh, the European Union and create a win-win situation. And um, I hope that the Abraham Accord, which I mentioned, which as I said, are a tremendous, uh, cause a tremendous shift in the psychic and psychology in the Middle East, uh, in which Arab countries accept Israel as it is, a democratic, a Jewish state, as a part and parcel of the Middle East, will, and by this, broke the veto power of the Palestinians on every attempt to uh, have a, a development, a positive development within the Europe, within the peace process. This by itself will serve also as a positive catalyst to change the relation between Israel and the European Union. And uh, I think when it does, then the sky is the limit regarding Israel, the relations of, between Israel and the European Union. Thank you very much. I could have uh, talked uh, more and more details about it, but I think you got the gist of it uh, on one hand, very good relations on many issues which are important uh, to, each, uh, to each side, which are on the agenda of the world nowadays, from climate change, uh, food security, AI, cyber, fighting terrorism, fighting anti-Semitism, uh, anti uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, science and technology. And on the other hand, an impasse, which has been created by the unholy connection uh, by, created by the European Union uh, when it comes comes to the Middle East peace process. I hope that this change in the Middle East, which is in the European Union, which will have first and foremost a um, positive effect on our life, um, will also create uh, a linkage, which will be a holy linkage between Israel and the European Union in the near future. Thank you so much. Mr. Moore, thank you for your really interesting lecture. And I would now like to take this opportunity to ask our audience to engage in a conversation with Ambassador Moore. So feel free to raise your hands and speak if you want to, or just write your questions in chat so we will read them. I believe that we have some questions already, so I can read them for the Ambassador. So the first one is from uh, Tomislav. Is there a possibility that Israel opens uh, Israel Culture Center in Zagreb? Well, I hope, you know, this is this will be the, the peak of my uh, service in, in Croatia. Um, there is no doubt that the culture centers um, uh, are a very important uh, tool in diplomacy, in our public diplomacy. But unfortunately, we don't have enough um, funds and money in order to open uh, such centers in each and every country. Um, there is no doubt in my mind that had we had the money, Croatia would have been one of the places we could have um, opened this kind of culture center, which uh, could bring clo uh, closer and closer uh, the Croatian citizens uh, to Israeli to the Israeli culture, and um, uh, could uh, be a bridge between us uh, to for more understanding and more appreciation and more uh, friendship. Thank you. So we have a comment from Daniela. The Italian community in Zagreb, me as a president, would like to have a collaboration with your embassy or community. Anyone is more than welcome. I'm standing ready to, uh, to cooperate with anyone who would like uh, to um, uh, cooperate with us. 
Israel has a lot uh, to uh, learn from others. Uh, we can also offer for others to learn from us. I think it's um, a win-win situation and I'm waiting for a call tomorrow morning in order to take this next level. Thank you. So there's a question from Mirela Grobišić. Uh, has Brexit influenced possible changes in, in Israeli's attitude towards the European Union? I don't think so. I don't think so. As much as we have criticism um, and we have an ambivalent feeling toward the European Union, um, I personally, and I think I can speak on behalf of many Israelis, we looked at this wonderful project of the European Union as a wonderful thing. And I wish we had this kind of concept of living together without borders also in the Middle East, but the reality is such that we cannot have it. Maximum we can have is is peace agreement, uh, which in which um, are a guarantee for uh, not uh, you know fighting. But uh, as far as the European Union is is for us for me, is a is a great project which I hope uh, 550 million citizens appreciate. In spite of the fact that it's difficult, it's very bureaucratic. It goes down to the nitty gritty of our life. But imagine. But you can imagine, because Croatia, uh, good for you, you are a member of the European Union, freedom of access, freedom of movement. You can go wherever you want. You can live uh, with no borders. It's something which we, as I said, uh, can only wish for ourselves. And um, uh, the Brexit uh, as such is an internal European issue. It will, of course, uh, uh, influence the relation between Israel and Great Britain and the UK regarding uh, 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 agreements that have been signed, but these are technical issues. But as a concept, I think um, uh, this will be for us something which will uh, we cherish uh, for the long run. Thank you. So, can you please tell us a little bit, a little bit more about Horizon 2020? What do you think? Which mutual interests, interest is, or areas are the most valuable or the most significant in the relationship of Israel and European Union? And does the Middle East uh, peace process affect on that relation? Well, um, you know, those countries who put the pressure, those countries within the European Union who put the pressure uh, on Israel to uh, solve the Middle East peace process, uh, the relations with the uh, Palestinian, are those countries who are not so happy to allow um, Israel, for example, to participate in the various projects or to upgrade our relations in uh, regarding these 10 subcommittees, um, which are part of the Association Council, which I mentioned. Uh, so there is a connection uh, between them. As far as the horizon, um, Europe, um, um, I think that um, uh, last week, uh, the, um, the conference of uh, the science ministers of the European Union have uh, decided not to change uh, dramatically the rules and regulations regarding the participation of third countries. Uh, Israel is a third country. We are in category C. Uh, we are mainly active in um, a single uh, proposal, uh, single uh, activities. Uh, this hasn't been changed and we will continue to cooperate with uh, the European Union program as we did in Horizon 2020. I don't have with me right now, uh, well, if um, you bear with me a minute, Maybe you can ask uh, another question. I will come back to this and I will show you um, how much uh, uh, the activities of Israel within the European Union, uh, within the Horizon 2020. Uh, maybe you go to the next question. I'll come back to the issue once I find the uh, Yeah, thank you. I have one more question, maybe. So do you think that Croatia can look on Israelis like role models if we look at the investments and support of the government for the education and entrepreneurship for young people? Well, um, every country uh, is uh, by itself, is a special uh, case by itself. Uh, you cannot cut and paste uh, from one country to, to the other. But I think the principles that Israel has been using for many years uh, in order to promote science and technology and research and development are the same. Um, we, uh, on average, uh, we allocate four to five percent of our GDP to education. Um, to um, uh, research and development, eight, seven to eight percent to education. I think this speaks for itself uh, because we understand the, the, the importance. I just uh, read the other day, I think today or yesterday, that uh, Prime, uh, Prime Minister Plankovic 
is dedicated to raise the percentage of uh, the GDP uh, uh, devoted to science and technology and research and development um, to raise it. I think this is the right way to do it, uh, to encourage uh, research and development, encourage institutions and also, of course scientists to participate more and more and by supporting them, uh, by providing uh, the necessity money which uh, they need, uh, this will be, uh, of course, in the benefit um, of, of Croatia. Um, uh, Croatia, I must um, uh, put it on, 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 uh, on record, has been uh, helping uh, Israel within the European Union uh, to cut or to break this unholy connection which I was talking about um, between uh, the uh, positive advance, the positive uh, activities that we have been enjoying and the peace process. Uh, there is um, um, a momentum, another country joined Croatia in this. Um, uh, last month, uh, my, prime, my uh, foreign minister was uh, in a very important uh, unofficial meeting in Berlin, in which um, uh, the foreign minister of Germany also uh, was speaking on behalf of improving their relations and uh, differentiating between the two issues. So there is a positive um, development. We cannot uh, be uh, happy, uh, not now, but there is a change. And Croatia is part of this positive change and we appreciate it very, very much. Thank you. Okay, coming, coming back to uh, Horizon yeah. 2020, uh, since 2014 and until today, more than 400 universities, companies, and Israeli entities have been taking part in approximately 1,600 research and innovations projects in uh, Horizon 2020. Unbelievable. Small Israel, tiny Israel, 1,600 uh, 1, research and innovation project. Great. This is uh, only to show you that, that um, the sky is the limit also in this issue. Thank you. So let me check if we have other questions. If everyone wants to speak up, this is the opportunity to turn on your microphones and speak. So let me check it a little bit. Yeah, as I believe, as I believe we don't have other questions. Or wait a second. We will wait a couple more seconds if someone wants to join us. So I believe there, there are no other questions. So, so uh, you can speak, it's okay. So I, um, I thank you for your attention. Um, so many people came, it means that uh, many people are interested in this issue. Um, uh, the relations with the European Union are very important to Israel. Uh, this is, a no, this is a, not a zero sum game that uh, uh, we will, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, go uh, or uh, we uh, will promote our relations with the European Union on the expense of not having a peace and uh, solving the political problem in the Middle East. Uh, these issues are uh, not connected and I think um, slowly but surely the European Union, uh, Union leaders, especially now with the new formation of the institutions, they understand it. Um, uh, there are many, uh, some issues which I uh, uh, never mentioned uh, in, in this regard uh, is the um, anti-Israel uh, atmosphere in Europe, in some certain countries. Um, we are talking about uh, the BDS movement, uh, which are uh, against the basic existence of the state of Israel. I haven't touched upon the, the, anti the raising anti-Semitism in Europe. Uh, yes, in the United States, it's a, it's a problem too, but we are now in Europe. Um, it's an alarming situation. Um, only on Yom Kippur uh, in Sweden, uh, people were attacked uh, in Germany. Uh, a religious Jewish guy was attacked. So there is a raising anti-Semitism um, in Europe uh, while the Muslim community there is growing. Uh, they are connected. Um, it's about time that many of the European countries will adopt the working definition of anti-Semitism, which has been adopted by IRA, the International Holocaust Remembrance um, Association. So there are many issues which uh, Israel and uh, the European Union are connected. Um, the issue of migration, the issue of fighting terrorism, 
money laundry, uh, and many other issues which affect all our lives um, uh, when we live in Europe or in Israel. Uh, but uh, maybe this will be a topic uh, for uh, a second uh, meeting with us, maybe next year, in which I hope I will be able to report to you that this unholy connection has been broken and we are living Israel and the European Union and living happily after, ever after and riding together toward the sunset. So romantic. So thank you for attending. Thank you for uh, listening to me. And thank you for giving me the chance to present you this case. Thank you once again. And on behalf of Europe House Zagreb and European Women Croatia, thank you for sparing your time and this afternoon to be with us and to give us this really, really interesting lecture. Thank you. Bye-bye.